In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, the Lord be with you. So welcome, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this Mass of uh, Thursday, Thursday the 12th of uh, November. And this Mass is being offered for Patricia Agnello Calaco in Thanksgiving. And we remember uh, always in November all the those on our November dead list, all the members of our families, our friends, whose names are in the November dead list, that they may rest in peace. Also at this time, uh, we offer this Mass uh, for all those very many uh, victims of sexual abuse uh, by priests and religious and lay people in the Catholic Church in England and Wales. Uh, we pray for the victims and we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. O Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who are glorified in the Bishop St. Martin, both by his life and death, make new, we pray, the wonders of your grace in our hearts, that neither death nor life may separate us from your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Sing 
forever of your love, O God. My truth and my love shall be with him. By my name his might shall be exalted. He will say to me, You are my Father, my God, the rock who saves. I will sing forever of your love, O God. Alleluia, Alleluia. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Alleluia. Uh, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, escorted by all the angels, then he will take his seat on his throne of glory. All the nations will be assembled before him, and he will separate men one from another as the shepherd separates sheep from goats. He will place the sheep in his right hand and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you whom my father has blessed. Take for your heritage the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. Naked, and you clothed me. Sick, and you visited me. In prison, and you came to see me. Then the virtuous will say to him in reply, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and make you welcome, naked and clothe you, sick or in prison and go to see you? And the king will answer, I tell you solemnly, insofar as you did this to one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did it to me. The Gospel of the Lord. Martin of Tours lived in the 300s and he was a convert to Christianity. Um, he was a, came from a pagan family. And he was preparing for his baptism. And at that time in the church, um, preparation of baptism for an adult took time. It would not, not be possible simply to baptize someone very, very quickly with very little instruction. No you might have to spend about three years preparing for baptism. And so it is today that the church, when adults come to see us in the church, we tell them, yes, they're very welcome, but this will take time because this is important. This has to be done well. You have to think about these things very deeply. And in the course of his instruction, Martin thought very deeply about his life. He heard the gospel echoing in his heart. And it came time for him to do military service. And he read the gospel. And he heard this call to military service. And he thought, these two, they don't work together. The gospel is calling me to live a different way, never to take up arms, never to do violence. And so he refused to fight. And if you like, Martin uh, became the first conscientious objector, the first Christian in the history of the church to become a conscientious objector and refuse to bear arms. And maybe Martin has a message for that, for us, 
in our time that we take this for granted, the bearing of arms and so on. But for Martin, no. It was impossible to be a follower of Christ and to bear arms. Eventually, uh, he was baptized and he entered monastic life. And he was a great pastor and he established communities uh, in France. And the monastic community that he established still exists today uh, in France. Man of great influence and pastoral sense. And because he was so good and so pastoral, in the end he was more or less dragged to become the local bishop, to become uh, the bishop of Tours. So a very great pastor. Uh, very committed to the gospel. So someone for us, particularly I think in this country, this week, for the Catholic community in this country, someone to ask to plead for us, to intercede for us. Because in some ways, this is a truly awful week for the Catholic Church in England and Wales. A truly awful week, because on the 10th of November, a report was published about the history of sexual abuse in the Catholic Church in England and Wales. Parliament has set up a commission that's looking at all sorts of communities and groups in the country and investigating sexual abuse in different communities. And this Tuesday after um, many, many sessions and investigations, uh, the report was published about sexual abuse in the Catholic Church in England and Wales. And in the nearly 50 years of history examined by this conference, in over 12 very long hearings, in the nearly, nearly 50 years of history examined, there were at least 931 complaints made involving 3,000 separate instances of child sexual abuse in Roman Catholic parishes, schools, and religious communities. The report truly makes shocking reading. It is shocking, it is horrific, and it challenges us. And Martin would ask us to rise to the challenge, to renew ourselves and to renew our church um, at this, this time. And we are condemned for our failure to deal with this responsibly and for our that so often things have been swept under the carpet, hidden from view, and it will not do. So now in our times, the victims have had the opportunity to speak, and they must be cared for. In response to this report, um, Cardinal Vincent and Archbishop Malcolm McMahon of Liverpool issued a statement and one of the things they said is this, we, apolog we apologize to all victims and survivors who have not been properly listened to or properly supported by us. By listening with humility to those who have suffered, we can contribute to the healing of the wounds of abuse, as well as learn from those most directly affected how we must improve the Church's safeguarding standards, policies and procedures. It is a truly horrific a report and very challenging to us. And there have been reports like this in so many different parts of the world, but here and now we must face the challenge and the situation in England and Wales. And let us pray through the um, intercession of Martin of Tours, 
we will do that thoroughly, honestly, and courageously. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we've received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Sanctify these offerings, we pray, Lord God, which we joyfully present in honour of St. Martin, so that through them our life may always be directed, whether in tribulation or in prosperity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Martin of Tours you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and give it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. 
we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Vincent our Bishop and all the clergy. I remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Martin of Tours, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. I'd like to invite you at home to make your spiritual communion. to sit in your home, sit at the feet of Jesus, 
and allow him to be present to you and allow him to feed in your hearts. Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it for me, says the Lord. Let us pray. Grant to us who have been restored by the sacrament of unity, O Lord, perfect harmony with your will in all things, that just as St. Martin submitted himself entirely to you, so we too may glory in being truly yours. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.